All right, welcome back to Getting Sober, dot, 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 again. My name is Jay, and today we're going to talk about 20 different ways to set personal boundaries. And by the way, before we get started, I have a very important theme for today's video that I want you to remember, and I want you to write it down. Are you ready? Write it down. Temporary inconvenience is the price that we pay for permanent comfort. So without further ado, the first example for setting personal boundaries is to speak up. Clearly communicate when something makes you feel uncomfortable. My favorite motto to remember when it comes to speaking up is close mouths don't get fed. So here's a pop quiz. Is the conversation in your head happening anywhere else besides in your head? No. So let it out. Speak up. Share your thoughts, your ideas, your inspirations, and your concerns. Make sure that everyone else around you is on the same page. You can't just depend on others having your best interest in mind, especially if you're not willing to have your own best interest in mind by speaking up. The second example for setting personal boundaries is to learn to say no. You don't always have to give people a reason when you say no. I'm going to say that again. You don't always have to give people a reason for saying no. You don't want to drink? Why? No is a sufficient answer by itself and it doesn't need an explanation. So much so that the next time anyone challenges you on it, say exactly what I just said, which is literally the textbook answer from any Psychology 101 literature. Say the following. No is a good enough answer and it doesn't need an explanation. The problem in the power dynamic between us and our friends and our family is that we allowed so many years to go by and we gave in so many times to their preferences. They got used to that dynamic. But today is a new day and a new opportunity to practice setting personal boundaries. And yes, it will take practice. People who aren't used to hearing you say no will be resilient first and also too probably the second and third time around. But eventually, they, just like you, will start to see the new pattern and will adjust accordingly. And if not, well then congratulations, you just identified a toxic person. A toxic person that you probably shouldn't spend any more time with for a little while or maybe even permanently. The third example for setting personal boundaries is stand by your values. Do not let other people compromise your core beliefs. Most of us here in the community are on a mission towards self-improvement. You are the CEO of the company of you. You are the boss. What you do, where you go, what time you show up, and what time you leave are on your schedule when it comes to your free time. When we stand by our values and don't let others dictate how we behave or how we interact with them, it shows them that we deserve respect. As the song lyrics say, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, find out what it means to me. The fourth example for setting personal boundaries is avoid drama like the plague. Stay away from unnecessary drama and the people who love starting it. When we start our sobriety journey or any self-improvement journey, it's 100% a fact that other people in our lives are going to feel left out. Remember, you are the boss of you. And just like any boss, you have higher responsibilities now. Here's an example. If you were promoted to become, say, the boss at a factory, you wouldn't go back to working down on the assembly line just because your coworkers miss you and make you feel bad for leaving them. Drama's toxic and leads to what? Negativity, gossip, and stress. And stress leads to what? Wanting to drink. And also to other bad habits and worse coping mechanisms. The fifth example for setting personal boundaries is eliminate the gossip. We just talked about drama and the evil seed of drama is gossip. Is other people's business your business? Or is it their business? It's theirs. And just like in financial terms, unless their company's really worth investing in, don't find yourself investing into other people's business for free. That devalues your own time and worth, and it contributes to more toxic and negative behavior. The next time that one friend decides to try and spread a little juicy gossip your way, simply ask him this question. Is whatever you're about to tell me going to benefit you, me, or the person you're talking about in any way? If the answer is no, which it probably is, then pivot the conversation to a more positive topic. Sooner or later, that dramatic gossip-loving friend of yours is going to do you both a favor by figuring out that you're not available for wasting your time. Think of it like this. You didn't lose a friend, you gained more time for yourself. The sixth example for setting personal boundaries is make time for yourself. 
Dedicate specific hours of the day solely for self-care. In today's hustle culture, you can easily find your mental health taking a slide and just wanting to escape your responsibilities with maybe a nap. But what if you had your daily routine down to a science and you could take a nap guilt-free? Making time for yourself becomes easier and easier when we cut down on the drama, the gossip, the toxic behaviors, and when we speak up, when we say no, and when we stand by our values. The seventh example for setting personal boundaries is refrain from being a fixer. Let others handle their own problems unless they ask for help. You have a very big responsibility right now, which is your own self-improvement journey. This also means limiting advice. Offer advice only if asked, but even then, evaluate the situation and ask yourself if it's genuinely gonna be a good use of your time. I'm willing to bet that you're the type of person that thinks, well, I can give anybody advice, but I can't do it for myself. Well, maybe that's because you aren't listening to you. Remember, your current self and your future self are on the same team. But every time that you cheat on your future self with your past self, you repeatedly show the people that you keep trying to fix that you aren't worth listening to because in fact, you aren't even listening to you. One of my favorite quotes is, the magic that you're looking for is in the work that you're avoiding. The eighth example for setting personal boundaries is limiting your exposure. We all know that certain situations will encourage our compulsive behaviors. So it's important to limit your exposure to those certain people, places, and things, and also to activities, especially in the first few months of sobriety. Every single one of us in our sobriety journeys are gonna be tested by weddings, birthdays, holidays, and social gatherings, where it's most likely that we're gonna be the only person not drinking. If we know that certain people, places, things, and activities are gonna be harder for us to handle, it's our job to limit our exposure to them, at least until we're strong enough to handle them or make the decision to not participate for maybe a little while. Remember, none of those people, places, things, or activities are going anywhere, so be patient. The ninth example for setting personal boundaries is stick to your daily routine. Stick to routines that suit your needs, even if others have different routines. This is almost always an immediate challenge for those of us who may live with family members or significant others who aren't willing to cut back their own drinking habits. If you have to sleep in a different room, do it. If you have to go to bed early, do it. If your partner wants to sleep in because they're hungover, but you want to get up early and go for an early morning walk, then do it. I've been on both ends of relationships where either they wanted better for themselves or I wanted better for myself. But don't let perceived loneliness stop you from achieving your goals. Remember, alone time is not the same as being lonely. Own your free time. You've worked hard for it. The tenth example for setting personal boundaries is protect your personal time. Make sure that you block out time for hobbies, passions, and self-care routines. Would you expect your friend or family member to jump out of their luxurious bubble bath or leave in the middle of a massage just because you had some drama going on in your life? No. So why let others do the same thing to you? Put your phone on silent when you don't want distractions. Put your phone on airplane mode when you're sleeping or in the middle of a good book. Limit the distractions. Tell the people that you live with if you need some quiet time for a quick nap. Shut your bedroom door when you need privacy. Do whatever you have to do to feed and protect your internal growth. When I'm downstairs, my partner knows that I am at work. And just because I am home doesn't mean that I'm willing to be distracted. Set rules that everyone in your house will be comfortable with and update those rules as needed. It's important to remember that you don't have to put up with toxic responses from people in your life. And that just because you're doing something good for you, it doesn't mean that they are allowed to make you feel like it's hurting them. You're introducing new changes, so be patient. And most importantly, be persistent. Have the conversations that you need to have to protect your personal time and work on the compromises that your personal and professional relationships need so that you can both have the life that you deserve moving forward. The 11th example for setting personal boundaries is avoid overcommitting. Do not say yes to everything. Understand your limits. I think it's safe to say that we all relate to the feeling of saying, I wish that I had the same energy for the plans that I committed to when I first said yes to them. There's only so many hours in the day for your own routine. There's only so much energy for any one of us to give. We're all guilty of saying yes just to not disappoint someone. But you also matter in that equation. If saying yes to someone else means that you are going to be disappointed later, then you've already disrespected your own personal boundaries. The 12th example for setting personal boundaries is be direct. 
Being direct means to clearly state your needs without feeling guilty. I'm gonna say that one again. Clearly state your needs without feeling guilty. Each party is gonna have a set of needs and expectations. If a friend says, hey, we're all gonna meet at the bar after work, but your goal is to go work out after work, then their expectations of you joining them conflicts with your personal needs of self-improvement. This is the time to establish your needs by telling them that you're not joining them because your goal is to work out and that's exactly what you intend to do. Don't budge. Their goal is to drink, not yours. And by you not joining isn't going to interfere with either of your goals. Remember, nobody ever woke up the next morning and regretted being sober. The 13th example for setting personal boundaries is protect your energy. Energy vampires are real. Comment down below if you know at least one person who is absolutely draining to be around. They always seem to have another problem and never seem to deal with any of those problems any better, right? So then what happens? You willingly sign up to play barstool therapist, letting them spew endless hours of junk into your ears and by the end of it, they feel a little better and you feel a lot worse. So defend and protect your energy by politely declining to be their next victim. And instead, do something else better with your time that's better for your mental health and your emotional health. The 14th example for setting personal boundaries is limit family interactions. Now let me clarify, this doesn't mean to quit on your family. But what it does mean is to limit your interactions if certain family dynamics are in fact toxic. This is especially true during the holidays. People that we would probably never know or choose to spend any time with in real life magically appear around the dinner table during the holidays. This can be challenging for our mental health and also our emotional health, and also too, our sobriety. Remember, in life we don't get to pick who we're related to, but we do get to choose how long we have to be subjected to them. The 15th example for setting personal boundaries is avoid discussing hot topics. This one is especially true during the holidays. If certain topics, say politics, upsets you, learn to pivot the conversation and set a boundary to avoid them. Think about this. How many times have you jumped into the comments on say a political social media post and then changed somebody's worldview with a well-constructed response that took you over 30 minutes to edit? Never, right? And what happens? You spend all day arguing with some stranger on Twitter and then compromising your integrity and feeling embarrassed over what a huge waste of time it was. Well now, how's that gonna be any different than, than at the dinner table during Thanksgiving? If Uncle Larry sat down an angry, bigoted, misogynistic conspiracy theorist, he's most likely leaving the table that way too. And he's more than happy to take down everyone with him, but you get the opportunity to save yourself by ignoring him by taking your dinner to the other room, by talking to another friend or relative that you actually enjoy speaking to, and finding another conversation that you're open to having, one that's good for your mental health and also too for your blood pressure. Again, we are practicing sobriety, and we are also practicing patience along with practicing discipline, maturity, and what else? Setting personal boundaries, that's right. All right, we only have a few more to go. The 16th example for setting personal boundaries is express discomfort. Let someone know if their comments or jokes are inappropriate. Maybe not your angry Uncle Larry though. Just because everyone else let that person get away with acting a certain way doesn't mean that you have to let them also make you feel a certain type of way. And remember, any new change will almost certainly be met with resilience the first, second, and maybe also too the third time around. But I always like to think of today's theme. Do you remember what it was? Temporary inconvenience is the price that we pay for permanent comfort. The only thing standing in the way of a more permanent comfort is a teeny tiny little temporary discomfort out of the long timeline of your life. The same lesson also applies to getting sober and also to quitting other bad habits. The 17th example for setting personal boundaries is set expectations, such as I expect that you're really enjoying today's video and I expect that you'll wanna to subscribe to the channel, right? See what I did there? Make sure that people know what you expect in terms of respect and personal treatment. If you're uncomfortable with a nickname or what somebody else thinks is an innocent joke at your expense, your personal space, or even to your decision for self-improvement, let them know by setting the expectations up front. They probably won't appreciate hearing the constructive criticism at first, but that's part of what being a good friend is all about. We're supposed to keep each other on our best behavior. Their behavior is their problem to live with and you aren't contractually obligated to participate if they don't wanna change. 
Your goals, your physical health, and more importantly, your mental health are all in your control. And any person that you bring into your life is either gonna bring you closer to or further away from your goals. What did we say earlier? Alone time and loneliness are not the same thing. What's the point of being on a luxury cruise ship with a thousand other people if they're heading for an iceberg? Be the captain of your own ship and set sail for new adventures that your future self deserves. The 18th example for setting personal boundaries is sleep boundaries. Our physical health, our emotional health, and our mental health are all dictated by the quality of our sleep. Prioritize sleep by setting a regular bedtime and also to a regular wake up time. It might not be in your control at the moment, but how many more days are you gonna let your boss control your work schedule? How many more nights out are you gonna let your sleep get sacrificed because of friends? Not getting enough sleep affects our job performance, our mood, our hormone regulation, our physical health, and not getting enough sleep also ages us and weakens our immune system. Sleep is just as important as food and water. So do what you need to do to make sure to get the rest that you deserve. The 19th example for setting personal boundaries is personal space. Beware of space invaders. You look bored, let me talk your ear off. Communicate your need for physical and emotional distance when necessary. The fact that you haven't set the boundary with certain people in your life means that it's gonna take a little patience on our part while introducing these new changes. People can easily take offense if you're not willing to chat with them or spend time with them, grab lunch, or meet them out for a good time. That's because they expect what they're used to from you. Your personal space is your personal space. If someone's too close or too demanding, let them know. Aww. If you're uncomfortable with being touched, hugged, kissed, patted, pinched, or grabbed, or you're uncomfortable with someone having unseemingly unlimited access to you, don't let anyone gaslight you into thinking that just because it's always been a certain way, that it automatically means that that's just how it is. What did we say earlier? Temporary inconvenience is the price that we pay for permanent comfort. And before we get to our final example for setting personal boundaries, pause the video and tell us what you think of the list so far. And also too, tell us what successes that you've already had with setting your own boundaries. The 20th example for setting personal boundaries is avoid negative influences. It could be a friend, a family member, somebody at the office, or even your neighbor. Misery loves company, but it's not your job to indulge them or to freely give them your time or your energy or any of the other resources that you work so hard to achieve, including your sobriety. There's always gonna be someone you know that's gonna say something like, oh, come on, just have one drink, it won't hurt. It's a celebration, we're celebrating, come on. Or even worse, the most toxic thing that somebody can say, which is, you used to be more fun when you drank. And the same goes for them too. If the only way that you can really stand or tolerate being around them was when you were heavily intoxicated, then chances are it's time to set a personal boundary and choose time for yourself over time with them. Remember, the most important relationship that you're ever gonna have is the relationship with yourself. I know a lot of us have problems setting personal boundaries because a lot of us don't like conflict. A lot of us learned how to be functional adults from dysfunctional adults. While we're practicing sobriety from alcohol, we're also practicing emotional sobriety, spiritual sobriety, and sobriety from all the people, places, and things that aren't bringing us any closer to our goals. We only have one life to live, and the last thing that we want to do is lose respect for ourselves because we couldn't stand the pain of the temporary discomfort of setting a boundary, and then continue to be permanently uncomfortable in our environment, with our friends, with our family, and even in our own skin. Remember, setting boundaries is about recognizing your worth and ensuring your future well-being. It might be challenging at first, just like anything else you're not immediately good at especially if you're not used to practicing asserting yourself or respecting yourself. But with consistency, it becomes a natural and empowering aspect of your new life. Now, I don't know about you, but I definitely learned something new today. And if you did too, comment down below and say, I'm ready to set personal boundaries. And if you're ready to binge watch another one of our amazing videos, click the playlist on the top corner of the screen. And with that, I wanna wish you good luck on your self-improvement journey, and I will see you in the next video. If you wanna see another one of our videos, Click here.